episode eight. Welcome. I am your host, Mike. Today we have with us Trent Cucarelli. Trent, how are we doing today? I'm doing fantastic, Mike, and thanks so much for having me on the show. Oh, listen, the pleasure is all mine, my friend. Uh, I found out about you actually through a Australian real estate article. And yep. um, I, I don't know why. I, I No one sent it to me. I just found it. And I saw this collection you had, and I was like, sweet baby Jesus on a roller coaster. This is a fantastic <laughs> collection. I have to talk to this guy. And um, we I reached out to you in May. And we had a conversation and you had some stuff going on, which I really want to talk about. And we connected not too long ago. And here we are. So, yeah. Trent, tell everybody about yourself, please. So I'm a massive toy collector. Love, you know, I grew up in the 80s um, and I'm, I'm a product, I think, of the maybe the, the relaxing of regulations that probably came out of the U.S., I think, under the Reagan administration that might have sort of said, we can promote to kids and, and, you know, have half an hour cartoons every day. Right. So, so those, are the, you know, He-Man, the master of the universe, mm. it's just burned into my brain. Um, all those sort of cartoons, Ninja Turtles, that sort of thing. So I loved toys as a kid. And then as, a, as I got a bit older, and um, I think it was around the time, late 90s, Star Wars, the yeah. special editions. The, all the re-releases, yep. All the re-releases. And Kenner put out their Power of the Force line. And I remember yeah. going into a store... And just seeing Star Wars on the pegs blew my mind. And, and that got me into the into the toy collecting. So I've been collecting now for about 23 years. Uh, collecting all those sort of nostalgic 80s and early 90s toy properties. And I love to collect... Um, just a little bit. Card. I'm a big, you know, yeah, <laughs> big, big Pint on Card fan as well. Oh. But all sorts of toys from you know Ninja Turtles, He-Man, Transformers, Dino Riders, Mask. <sighs> you name it, Dick Tracy. All, all the Bucky O'Hare... Um, a big Batman fan, so Ken of Superpowers, Batman the Animated Series, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. But mm -hmm. um, about four years ago, I was approached by some toy friends and they asked if we wanted to sort of be involved in a podcast. And so for the last four years, I've been doing Toy Power, which is a weekly Love podcast it. out of Australia where we talk toy collecting and, and uh, try and chat to some of the industry professionals, the special guests, that sort of thing as well. It's and, been great. And probably my biggest... Yeah, which which is, and we just have so much fun doing it. Like, um, you know, what better excuse to get with your mates and chat chat about toys? Preach, sir. You know? Preach. So <laughs> so good, and um, and the community that we've, the people we've met through that journey. You know, meeting, even talking to you now, that the people is what makes it. I think now, like you know, you can you can accumulate the toys and get yeah. so much out of that, but it's the connections that is the the big thing for me now, and and. Actually, that, funnily enough, led me into my sort of latest journey, which was the, the Lego Masters Australia yes, sir. journey, um, which was, again, just driven by wanting to connect with people that shared a passion with Lego, um, which sort of, you know, it wasn't there to win, win the prize no. or do anything. It was just about being with like-minded people. And um, so, so that aired in, in about April, uh, just been, and uh, absolutely fun ride. So that's sort of, I guess, me in a nutshell. Yeah, listen, I've actually caught um, some of the episodes of Toy Power, um, the uh, Biker Mice from Mars uh, episode. I've, I've, again, I've, I've listened to them. I, they're, they're great. And like you said, it's, it's like going to um, like a convention or a, um, a comic book shop and just BSing with your friends about like what's on the shelves or what's like you know what you know what comic book just dropped. And it's and it's and it's organic, and I love that. And like you said, that that's why. I did the show and that's why I wanted to bring you on. Cause I, I even like the, from the podcast and even on the Lego master show, you can, that, that passion that you have for, you know, the nostalgia, the toys and everything really like comes through. It's, it's, yeah. it's great. It's refreshing. <laughs> it's fucking great. Can't, can't hide it. And, and it's, it's interesting. The toy collecting community, uh, it, it can have its negative side and, and, you know, like with, with them um, scalping and, and, you know, we're in a post Toys R Us environment. Yeah. Obviously, there's a, a lot of impacts to the way we get our exclusives. You know, you just look at the NECA debacles with trying to get those Ninja Turtles, particularly oh, for you God. guys stateside. Yeah. Um, it's been, you know, it's it's horrendous. And that probably it can bring out the worst. And, and where I always try to get back to is, well, we're all in this together. We're all part of a community. Let's help each other. Let's look out for each other. You know, if I can find that for you, that's that's the way to do it. It's not about buying something and then trying to sell it for, you know, double the money the next day. It kind of defeats the purpose, in my opinion. So, yeah, if, if we can 
be that kind of community, I think it's really great. I agree. I agree 100%. We have, um, we have a, a, I hate to say pigeonholed sometimes into how we're, we're portrayed in, in the media at large as, you know, collectors or fanboys or whatever. So it's, it's nice to see us get each other's backs when it comes to, yep. to stuff like this. Exactly. Yep. I agree. So, all right. Um, let's do a little show and tell. I know you've had sometimes on your podcast, a show and tell type uh, thing. So, so let's, let's turn the tables on you, my friend. Uh, I know you have a lot of stuff. Uh, let's see what you have. Yeah. So look, I, I mean, I've got, I've got so much stuff, you know, here to, to go through, but I have to just pick out a few, few yeah. items that I'll just show off, which Please. you know just mean a lot, a lot to me. And the first one I will, we were talking a little bit about NECA and, mm. There's been, a, I guess, in my opinion, a bit of a renaissance in Ninja Turtles. You know, Ninja Turtles yeah. was always aimed at, at the kids. Playmates did a wonderful job at, at toy lines directed at kids. But there was a gaping big hole. In fact, for me, two gaping big holes. But one, the first one was, was the, yeah, um, the Fred Wolf Shredder. Um, you know, the, the Shredder we got was this, uh, in, in, in 1988 for Playmates, was this real amalgamation of... Uh, the, the comic book made into a toy didn't really look like the cartoon Not and it was always a gap um so to get and NECA just has has aced yeah. that figure opinion like right down just to the cape the, the cape mm. it flows beautifully um cartoon accurate um that that's just such a a wonderful piece um i, I have to i have to show a lego piece so, please um, by all means and and again, you know, Lego have so much stuff. You know, you can go nuts and spend a lot of money on it, but how can you go past something mm. like this, <laughs> the Voltron? Oh my god! Um, and and oh. this, you know, I get a lot of enjoyment out of you know cracking a set and building it and seeing what those engineers have done to come up with this, fully transformable. So all the lines come apart and turn oh into god. the lines, just like the original um, toy by Panache Place. Um, back in the 80s. So, you know, it comes with the sword, comes with the shield, uh, all, all the, the, the decals. Oh, the, the one negative, yeah. can't fit the pilots inside. Oh, yeah. Um, but, but they come, but they come with it. Uh, no, unfortunately, oh. no Lego minifigure pilots, which would have been, Oof. oh, that, that's oh. just the missing. Yeah. That's like, oh, <laughs> why didn't they do that? Um, um, I, have to, I have to go, look, I think we often on Toy Power, we talk about... Um, favorite films yeah you know, films that kind of defined you and mm -hmm. i have this really vivid memory of and i think i was only what seven or eight at the time uh going to see 1989 tim burton's batman film and my my knowledge of batman i'd read him in the comics okay. i'd seen the animal series and this just blew my mind and to, to this day it's one of my favorite films i can re-watch that anytime over and time, over right again. yeah anytime right brilliant um Oh, I think yeah. you know to go back and and just um, put it put into your collection one of these Kenner Batmobiles. Now that has the missiles um, that come out. You press on the on the the two yeah. turrets and the missiles come out, right? Yeah, this one you, yeah. can, you can press here yep. and you got the machine guns that flip up. Yep. Um, it does have the missile firing action here at the front. Um, <laughs> the flame that pops out of the back. Great. So yeah, it's 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 a beautiful design. That 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 I mean to me, Batman the animated series Batmobile is a close second, but that Tim Burton. Batmobile is is just such a beautiful design. A hundred percent. I got. I just. I have to. I have to shout out something um, quickly, please. As well, uh, the, the, the this. You know, how can you go past? I think for any Star Wars fan, yeah, man. Original Kenner Star Wars yeah. is just such a great line, and, oh, and this yeah. guy I got from a from a garage sale back in. Uh, I think you know after the the figures come out, second hand garage sale. And huge Boba Fett fan, so just absolutely amazing to get him. But I remember getting this guy one oh, year yeah. for Christmas. It's the Imperial Dignitary. He came with the collector coin. So if I'd left it sealed up in the card, it would have been a nice uh, addition. But it's, I just had no. no idea who he was. I think I first saw him and I thought, that's the Emperor. Yeah, right. Um, but, uh, uh, you know, he gets, what, like five seconds of screen time in Return of the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> So that that's that's pretty funny, and and I do I do have to grab uh, just a couple more things. Please, by um, all means, this is I, I there, you have so much you could open up a toy museum if you if you wanted to. <laughs> and, and Mike, that, that that is ultimately that is ultimately the long term dream. Really, it is to do that, um, and I have to work through the costings because it is a an expensive venture to you know book out a big space and 
staff it and do all those things. Um, but I, I would I would love to do that. I'd love to share this more broadly with the public. So, uh, well, but um, reason number six why you're on the show today, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> couple more to round out this this is um oh, wow. one one of the other cartoons i really loved growing up was the um inspector gadget and and we've got a uh, a company i think it's out of uh out of hong kong five pro studio that have just released solicitation images for a new inspector gadget line really um penny and brain we've got chief quimby no dr claw yet but inspector gadget but the gadget figure as you can imagine, by today's standards, he's got all the interchangeable I would hope helicopters so, and pallets and all that, all that <laughs> stuff. But Tiger Toys, what a fantastic line they did did back in the day! And it was the first time we got to see what Doctor Claw looked like, you know? Yeah. Behind yeah. The chair. yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, um, final, final couple of figures. Um, this, it's this huge. Ninja Turtles, huge, hugely influential in my toy collecting. Um, I've managed to collect probably. Over a hundred of the mint on card figures from Ninja Turtles, ranging from '88 through to about '93, '94, don't have a scratch. That that uh, we can talk a little bit about that that later in Holy Grails. But I do have a hot spot, which is um, yeah, of an equivalent sort of ilk. Same year, okay. a scratch and, and pretty hard to come by. But but my favourite Ninja Turtle figure has to be Casey Jones. Um, oh, yeah. What a cool character! Oh yeah. And Elias Cotis in the in the nineteen ninety. How good? How good? Oh. Yep. <laughs> Still one of my favorite movies. A... It's a shame they don't show that on more often on like on like art on public broadcasting and cable for us. I love that yep. movie. Yeah, but, uh. it, it, it's one of those ones. I think it's, if it, if it would come on, you can just sit down and watch it wherever yep. you see it and yep. just be captivated by. It. And 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 Frank from Toy Power, it's his, it's pretty much his favorite movie. And you know he talks about you know no, and he's proud to say it that that scene where they're in front of the fire. And Splinter comes, comes to them and they're fire, meditating, yeah. you know, like getting quite emotional, quite teary when that happens. And and that I think is a real testament to the film that it, it it's it's Jim Henson puppetry mm-hmm. magic, and they've captured that emotion because that scene is a puppet talking to four guys in animatronic suits. Right. Like amazing that it can convey that emotion. And when you see all the behind the scenes stuff about how hard it was to move in it, and like even like the um, you know. You, you could see like a you know a boom mic in one scene all, all the other behind the scenes crap it doesn't matter because like even when you're a kid and even now i think i think i saw some meme that said like you know uh 1990s tur- uh, turtles is still is the best teenage mutant ninja turtle movies changed my mind and everyone when i posted yeah. it nobody could disagree with me yeah oh without a doubt you, right. you, you can't no. um spot spot on and, and, and look the last one i'll, I'll point out um you know, Superpowers was was great, and I loved it. Mm-hmm. But I was a bit young for it. But I got into Batman the Animated Series in a big way. And again, I've gone back and collected a lot of that Minton card, a lot of that loose. Um, but that that was a cartoon that I think changed the way I viewed cartoons. Okay. It was the right time for me. I would have been, I think it came out just after Batman and around the same time as Batman Returns. So I would have been about 10. Yeah. Probably at that age where, you know, some of those children's cartoons, you might be like, oh, I'm too cool for that. And this hit the spot. This was dark. It was edgy. It was more adult. It had all the rogues gallery that I knew from the comics. Yep. Uh, Bruce, Tim, Paul Dini, those guys that worked on it. Oh. Absolute genius to bring that together. Those first two seasons, man. Uh, the the oh. animation, the animation, the storylines, they were just uh, bar none. There was no comparison. Yep. And it's it's scary to think it's like I don't know how how old you know like what is that now almost twenty twenty five years sort of anniversary style, but to see how it holds up today, oh yeah, that, that's sensational. Exactly, you could still watch it, and I'm sure like you've, you, I, I know you have two uh, two young sons. Have you introduced them to Batman yet? Have you introduced I, them to I the animated series? Yeah, and I'm one. sure they're like what you watching them watch it. You're you're like my boys. Yeah. Exactly, because there, there is like if, if I show them some things, they'll be like, "Oh, it's a bit, it's a bit dated." But but that holds up 100. percent Fantastic, I love it. So out of the 80s, out of all of the 80s cartoons, you know, like we said before, He-Man, Transformers, Th- Thundercats, all those. Which would you have said was your your favorite of, of those? If, which one did you gravitate towards? He-Man, the Master of the Universe, was probably the the big one when I was younger. And I think it's just who doesn't want to be powerful, the most powerful man in the universe. Yeah. Right. So you resonate that um, so strongly. 
and then I think I got swept up in in turtles when turtles that hit. Uh, that was the that was the cartoon to get home from school, put oh, on yeah. and watch. And and I remember it copping a bit of flack. If you, even if you think to what happened in the UK, the censors they couldn't call it Ninja Turtles. They had to call it Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Yeah, I remember that. And and they had to cut out Mikey's nunchucks. They weren't allowed to show the nunchucks. So if you think about that, even in an Australian perspective, there was a bit of backlash in the media about to maybe the the violence of it Mm -hmm. um and and it was that battle with my parents to say i need to watch this and i remember having to fight fight that battle and thankfully i had an older brother and he helped win the argument for me so we were allowed to actually watch it oh and and i mean i'm sure unfortunately you saw i mean the 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 even the first couple episodes the first couple seasons and then i mean it started to get a little like towards the end you know unfortunately it seems like that's the way many many shows went It, it kind of a little bit of a decline it did, but yeah, I mean, I thought it ran for about nine or ten seasons yeah. or something. Uh, I guess you have to ex- expect that to some degree. But I, I, I kind of you know don't go back oh, to yeah, watch no. those late ones. But you know, even the, like the first five parter, how good? How oh good yeah, that? yeah, you're right, a hundred percent. Um, okay, so um, you have a, a, a gigantic collection. So this is going to be difficult for, for potentially for you to answer. Uh, if you had um, unlimited resources. A time machine of some sorts, uh, access to anything in the world, and and what would be your holy grail piece? That grail piece that you want on, you know, that you're like, yeah, I've made it. This is what I wanted. Yeah, it's it's a really good question. It's really hard. And for me now, what I, what I'm finding as a collector is He-Man: The Master Universe is almost becoming unattainable, particularly if you want to collect a lot of that stuff graded in in original condition, mm-hmm. mint on card, mint box. Mm-hmm. I was lucky enough back in, um, I think it was the early 2000s, to, to get an attorney a playset, 99% complete. Had to get it from the States because there's reports it was ne- it was broadly never released here in Australia. No. We actually did have it in a store called John Martin's here in Adelaide, which was a very specialized department store, but it had a okay. massive toy section. So they did a deal to get it over. We've got reports as well that another store here in Adelaide had it, but... There, there's a, if you talk to Australian community, toy collecting communities, masters communities, they'll say it never came to some of the other capital cities at all. So Eternia, I have it, but if I had the time machine, I'd love to get a boxed one. And I say that because there's something about that Masters of the Universe box art that for me is a big part of the property. You know, the cartoon's great, but yep. the cartoon's quite kid oriented Mm -hmm. the box art makes you feel like you're looking at a a conan a frank frazetta painting Mm -hmm. and it brings you into this deep dark universe so i honestly don't think i would have resonated as much with masters if it wasn't for that box art so eternia box sealed is probably my holy grail and then it then it's a question of maybe some of those obscure items like the laser lights the laser light he-man the laser light skeleton Mint as being a mint on card collector to get their mint on card and they're just unattainable for me now if that makes sense no 100 so they're, they're I got you. on a pedestal as as absolute holy grail items wow that's great that's fantastic now before we had uh, started recording uh we were talking about um the dick tracy line of uh of, of figures and dick tracy when, when i was when i was younger was Hands down, one of my favorite movies. I had, I, I went to, to Disney. I had the, the, the Dick Tracy shirt. You know, yeah. I, I wore it like, you know, like, you know, I was going to be a detective one day and all this other stuff. <laughs> I, I wanted the freaking watch, the whole nine yards. Yeah. And, but their, their, their figures weren't, um, there wasn't a lot of merchandising when it came to figures. It was more, it was a lot more accessories and a lot more wearable yeah. stuff. So, um, you have the Dick Tracy stuff. Yeah, I, I do, and this is a it's a it's an interesting story because when uh, yeah, so like I said, big Ninja Turtles fan, mm-hmm. and I remember loving the Dick Tracy movie. You know, as yeah. a kid, very cleverly done. The colors, the fact they translated almost you know Chester Gould's, they only used his original um, colors that yeah. it was printed in. Um, you know, the, those those sort of core primary colors that they brought in. So it was a it was a beautiful film. Might have not had the best plot looking back at it now like there may be some some little issues with the plot 
but it's a beautiful film, art direction, um, you know, the, the makeup and the costumes, the way they frame the shots, beautiful. But it was just, I saw it in the shops and I'd say, mum, can I have these figures? And it was just, didn't work out for me. So when, when I got back, when I said, like, I, I started looking at the Star Wars figures, there was this little secondhand shop in, in Adelaide in one of the, the malls. And I went in and there they had, they had four mint on card Dick Tracy figures. And this is early, uh, this is sort of 97, right? So okay. seven years after the films come out. So yeah. they're not super collectible. They were going for like maybe $10 here. And I went in and I bought Dick Tracy. I'm like, oh, there it is. And it was, it was my first vintage purchase. Of, of, so I bought the Star Wars figures. They were modern toys on the shelves. This was my first purchase of a vintage figure. And the next, and that night, I was staring at this mint on card Dick Tracy figure, and I just had this itching sensation. I've got to get the other three. I've got to go in. I've got to go back and get those other three. And they were flat top, prune face, and itchy. Mm. So, and I was, I queued up at the store at like nine o'clock in the morning, like, oh, please, please tell me they haven't <laughs> sold. And, and sure enough, they were still for sale. So I bought, bought those four, and then it was about collecting that that line. And in Australia, I think you know Dick Tracy's. I'd say it's a really big and really iconic American property. It, it didn't seem to translate massively over here. So it sort of, it, it was a bit obscure. It was a bit hard to track down. Um, but, and this is the, the late 90s where there's no real, eBay's sort of, I think, there. Yeah. Um, I had to use mail orders. I think there wasn't, I don't know if I, I'd used PayPal at the time. And, and I remember the, the, Second to last figure I needed was Sam Catchem, and I had to send off to Canada uh, through some old website, get it mailed out, do it, send in my money order. But there was always this one figure that had eluded me, and it, and it was, of course, the blank. And, and the story behind that is the blank is a spoiler for the film. Right. So right. there must have been a, um, a directive that went out at some point from, from Disney to say to Playmates, you can't actually put that figure on the shelves because, the, you know, the figures would often come out before the movie right. released. So they, they pulled it. And what I understand from my research is that it ended up being sold through a Sears mail order catalogue out of Canada. And and I suspect the other thing that happened is they, they ceased production at some point. So only there were only a very limited number of items produced. Right. That made it super rare and super obscure. And back in the day it was already selling for about $100. And and I remember looking at one of these, I think it might have been Tomates or, you know, one of these action figure guides. And the blank was front and center on the, the cover, which was just telling me this is a, this an is, obscure yeah. and elusive item. So to go back and, and know that I've had this collection of 13 out of the 14 figures for um, 22 years and, and haven't got the blank. When I was filming Lego Masters, there was a, a very nice store here in Melbourne um, called uh, Lobos. And, and as, as, as I did while I was in Melbourne filming, I, I checked it out. And sure enough, there was a, an AFA graded blank figure on the shelf. Wow. And, um, it, you know, it was just too much to, to, to say no to. Yeah. And, and, it, and it was the biggest you know, debate about, do I get it? Oh, but, yeah, because it was, it was a lot of money. But because I'd been doing Lego... I'd been getting a bit of bit of cash from that, so I sort of put that towards the blank, and thankfully now have them in the collection. That's awesome, and it's it's and that was like you said, the the mask comes off. And spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't seen it, um, <laughs> it's it's uh, it is uh, Breathless Mahoney played by Madonna, and uh, exactly, and and that's like, you know a main I, character. Yeah, I mean, I mean, you know, the only reason she got it, I think, was because she was dating Warren Beatty, I think, at the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now, if we can for a second, I'd love to talk about uh, your your time on Lego on Lego Masters because you you, as you said before, uh, you had this this love of Star Wars and um, Lego Masters really for the most part didn't uh, do a lot of licensed stuff, but then there was one episode <laughs> where um, the 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 bay doors open up. And all the stormtroopers. And now I have to ask you because you're a Star Wars guy too. Was it intentional that that stormtrooper bumped his head on the on the door as it went up? It had to be, right? They, they did it as a little homage back okay. to a New Hope. Yeah. Okay, good. I just, I you know, I just had to make make sure. And um, your the what you folks had to do for that uh, was was build Star Wars vehicles. 
and you each got uh, um, the light, the dark, or the uh, you know the the bounty hunters. And um, when it was announced, uh, you were uh, I think as one of the hosts said, the last season's winners didn't scream as loud as you did. <laughs> <laughs> That is true. <laughs> what, what was that? What was that episode like for you to to be able to? Because you got the light side. Because I remember you pull out the Luke Skywalker figure. What was that episode like for you? Uh, it was one of the best experiences of my life to be in a room with with three million bricks, building a new a new vehicle in the Star Wars universe. And and the other thing they had, we had a brick pit. So mm-hmm. three million bricks, brick pit, all the all the parts, you know, generic parts. But the reveal for that episode was there was a second hidden brick pit just with Star Wars, just with Star Wars elements, all the oh. all the minifigs. Mm-hmm. And there were some super rare minifigs in that room, all the parts, all the cockpits. Um, I had no idea we would be allowed to build Star Wars, build a licensed product. So I just had, I was blown away when it was announced. And it was, it was a non-elimination episode, so no one could get eliminated. We were we were playing for immunity, so I just I just I'm just going to have fun with this. I'm just going to build an amalgamation of all my favourite elements of the Star Wars universe. So I sort of built this snow speeder, X-wing, A-wing kind of ship, and I put all these details in it, which they didn't show. But like the pilot had a targeting computer, like a, a, a viewfinder. Yeah, like yeah, right. Deploy the um in the Death Star trench run, um. You know, all these, all these. There was obviously a, an, an R2 unit sitting behind the cockpit, um, and there was a, a bay door that opened up, and all these computers and, and various things in there. So uh, we went a lot, a lot of effort to even greeble the underside. Oh, wow. So um, you know, rather than just having the, the, the underside of plates, we actually put greebling and, and, and plated over the, the underside of the ship just to give it that extra detail. And and Josh, my my partner on Lego Masters built a, a stand like a and it was like a a, a UCS kind of the ultimate collector series mm-hmm. stand black and beautifully done and, and we built this explosion that it had just like just blown up a tie fighter or something so we, we just leaned into all those those elements uh, it had it had um, foils that, that could open up oh, wow. and close like an x-wing so it was so much fun and and one of the one of the best things in that episode was the host Hamish came up mm-hmm. and you you kind of talk you're always mic'd up so mm-hmm. no matter what you say they're listening and i mentioned to someone for my birth for my 18th birthday my friend gave me a game of star wars trivial pursuit so i like trivial pursuit but only star wars questions okay. it's got a little r2 little r2d2 that you press and it That's generates awesome. the number <laughs> As the, as the die roll. Um, anyway, I was playing with my mate, and I suck at regular trivia. Right? So like, I'm, I'm oh. crap. But I, I managed to beat my friend without him even having a go. I, I just went around, got all the pie, didn't get a question oh, wrong, wow. and won the game. And I, I just mentioned that on air. And then half an hour later, the host comes up, and he goes, look, I've got questions for you. Everyone you get right, you can get a minifigure. And uh, everyone you get wrong, I'll get a minifigure. So <laughs> I did this and ended up with like 10 minifigures. So it was just, it was so much fun. Um, the whole, we, we did a, like a Wookiee off. We were doing um, voice impersonations of different characters. <laughs> um, it just had an absolute blast. So much fun. That's really like, I, I can't, like you said, I, I it has to be as, as a collector and even as a, you know, a, a person on earth that has to be one of your, your, favorite moments of your life yeah it is and and it, so at the time it, it was you know I, I i may have erroneously said it was the best moment of my life for getting my wedding day and that's why I, if you notice that's why i said that because like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, sort of, I toned it down but um but uh the the, the silver lot the secondary kind of benefit of mm-hmm. it was i had so many people reach out to me afterwards and say you in that star wars episode was how I would have been or how I would have felt if I was in there. And that, the fact that I was able to kind of convey that, that emotion that they perhaps would have felt um, or how they would have acted really meant a lot. That they could understand what I was kind of going through. They didn't go, oh, look at that weirdo no, getting no. so excited about this thing. It was a respect and a wow, that's what I would do. And that meant the world to me. I, I couldn't agree more. It was, it was really when, when I... 
<laughs> just it, it was it was like you won the lotto uh i every everything you could possibly win at the same time like somebody actually dropped like you know indiana jones is like fedora in front of you christopher reeves costume <laughs> just like all this shit in front of you and you were and it was yeah. it was really I, I like you said i can understand why people reached out to you it, re- it resonated with me and you know again the, the the passion that you have for for you know what you do is off the charts do you remember <laughs> let me ask you do you remember what your first thing you ever collected was your first first piece that you ever collected uh yeah well, well so as an as an adult going back into it uh, in that star wars right. line it right. was in a power of the fourth darth vader and han solo from that wave one right, right, um right. and then that, that modern toys and then like i said dick tracy right the dick, dick tracy, tracy stuff, right right was, yeah. was the first vintage toy um uh, that's as a as an as an adult so not toys i got given as as a child no no but no there, there was you know like i probably can't do it now because i've got you know, thousands and thousands of items. One or two. But there'd be a point, and I buy a lot online now because it's just the way the world is. Yeah. But there would be a point um, where I could go into my toy collection and say the year I bought it, the toy store I bought it from, the price I paid for it, the, the feeling I got when I, yeah. I went in there and, and saw it on the shelves. Um, and a lot of those memories are still really vivid from, from the early 2000s, that, that kind of era. And, and it's a big part of it for me is that that feeling that the, the, the hobby gives, um, that, that feeling of connection to your childhood, that, that passion of enjoying these properties mm-hmm. and and then being able to, I guess, like I said, with the community side of it, share that now with, with other collectors and, and talk about it and, 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 and chat and, and reminisce and, and oh. you know, oh, that, that scene from that movie and, and, oh, I remember when they did that or this bit in the cartoon. That That's what it's all about. Yeah, it's super cool. And that's why you have... Uh... Over, what are you? How many podcast episodes are you up to now? Uh, 182. Yeah, I was gonna say. I, I, I thought about 200. Um, and that's why you guys have the show. I mean, I, like you guys just go from topic to topic and, and reminisce about everything, and it's 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 fantastic. But now, talking about your collection, like you said, you have thousands of pieces. Um, I'm going to ask you the question that I've asked um, seven people now. Uh, if you had one shelf in your house. And it doesn't have to be a small shelf, big shelf. It's a theoretical shelf, so it's big as you, big or small as you want. And you can only pick three items from your collection. What would they be? Yeah, it's it's. I know, it, it I, know really, I know, I you know. Hard, hard hitting questions. Um, I would have to. It might it might not be like even the biggest items. You know, like I love my attorney. Yeah, but. It's probably not something I'd choose if I could only have three. You know, that's a crowning jewel of a master's collection. Right. Um, I'd, I'd probably have to start with one of my favorite pieces, which is Dino Riders. And my, I've got a couple of favorites in that line, but the, my, my ultimate favorite is the T-Rex. So the T-Rex from Tyco Dino Riders, all the little components on that, the claw arms at the front, the, the laser cannons, the fact that it was motorized and it could walk. Um, that that is a super special piece for me. Um, the other one I'd I'd have to put in I think my uh, Casey Jones mm. Playmates action figure. So many memories with that figure. I took him in with me to the 1990 movie. Um, I held him in my lap. It's awesome. Um, just just love the character. So that, and that toy. This is my original childhood um, uh, Casey Jones. He's he's battered and and everything. But his matter. wrist snapped off, and my dad drilled in a metal pin and reconnected it, so it still swivels. Um, That's awesome. So it sort of, it just, it means it means a lot. So that 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 That's... that would be up there. And then, being the massive He-Man fan, I'd have to pick a figure from He-Man. And funnily enough, it's going to be a very obscure figure. I'm going to grab it. Gra- grab um, it. It's going to be a very obscure figure, but it was my absolute favorite as a kid, and it's Sarod. He had the, from the movie. spark shooting feature. You can actually get... Yeah, look at oh, that. it still works. <laughs> safety standards probably weren't as high <laughs> back then. Screw it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but it, it just gives a cross-section of three items that resonate with my childhood and, and mean a lot. Yeah. They're obviously more expensive and more impressive items, but I think for me, it's got to be that connection to those, those I agree childhood. 100%. I agree. 
Um, now, speaking of Casey Jones, have you ever, um, and because I know that, uh, you know, Comic Cons are, are, are kind of non existent right now, but have you ever met or gotten an autograph from, from Elias? Have you ever? Never met, never met Elias. Um, I, I managed to get to San Diego in 2011 to attend San Diego Comic Con and, yeah. and um, the events surrounding that. Unfortunately, Elias wasn't wasn't at that one, and he hasn't come to Australia from what from what I've known, or I haven't seen him here. Um, but he would be one I'd love I'd love to get. Thankfully, I did see a video with him in it, and the first NECA Casey Jones figure that I think's just kind of hitting their shelves now. If you can if you can get your hands on it, um, it's got a, it's got the hockey mask mm-hmm. on, and it's non removable. And I heard at the time that that was an issue with Elias not providing the likeness. the likeness and there was a there was a an interview with judith hogue and she was um showing off i think a couple of the figures and I, I think elias just originally thought it was just really weird to have his likeness on one of these toys but after talking to judith and after sort of seeing the quality of the figures i think he had a, a change of heart and he sort of said look yeah i'll, I'll grant my likeness because of what it kind of means to, yeah. to the community and i think that's a really really cool thing that he's done so Hopefully, I'll be able to get that figure, and fingers crossed, I'll, I'll catch him at one of the cons. My man, I'm, I, I am 100% positive that you are going to be able to get that figure and get him, knowing you. Based on, based on everything that, that I've learned about you, I have full faith in you. So, Trent, I really want to thank you for coming on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure having you. Um, I, again, I, I love the, co- the collection. Uh, if you don't mind, if you could snap some pictures for me. I know that, again, there are probably pictures online of... of your collection from various articles that have been done on you. But if you wouldn't mind taking a couple that for, for the folks that watch, I would really appreciate it. Um, folks watch, listen, watch Lego masters. It's on YouTube and probably other places. I don't know, but as a, as a person from the U S that's how I have to watch it. Uh, listen to toy power. It's on, um, any place you can get a podcast, any place you can listen to a podcast. It's fantastic. They're great. It's a good time. By all means, subscribe. And speaking of subscribe, subscribe to this series. I would really appreciate it. Thank you for watching. And Trent, again, thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day.